Hey there, hi there, hello there, how are you? Hope you're doing well. It's been crazy past week. Uh, a lot of stuff is happening in America right now on top of the pandemic. <laughs> Don't want to speak too much about it other than check out my last video. Um, I had something on Monday specifically about all that stuff. I've updated the description to have a couple more links along with some Google Docs on how you can help out with various black communities. Right now, what's important is to listen to the black community and if you have the privilege to boost their voices and to protect them. It is not your place to try and speak for them and try to voice your opinion on how they feel because it's kind of their movement and what we need to do is work together to make sure there's a positive change and a lot of positive change. <laughs> so other than that, we're gonna talk about something else because as you can see, there's a sketchbook right here. Uh, I hopefully will have the audio working well. This is the third time that I am filming this and I'm going to try and keep this short because I babble a lot. <laughs> but uh, June is also Pride Month and I think because I've been working on this and I've been wanting to talk about this since I started this channel, I feel like this might be a good time. Um, it is something that I got from a hobo, homo, hobo? <laughs> I mean my family. <laughs> uh, now my family has strong feelings about a lot of things, but I got it from a homophobic aunt and I figured it'd be fun to turn it, uh, one of her sketchbooks into something that she would not like to see. So <laughs> here is what I call my book of queer. Um, I know that using the word queer when it comes to the LGBTQIA plus community is kind of controversial. I use queer just because it's a single word and I believe it's been from what I've read and what I've understood it's started to be taken back by the queer community and if I'm wrong go ahead and correct me. I am willing to listen. I understand that I'm not fully educated on everything. I try to because this is something that is near and dear to me and specifically I am part of this community but I'm not good at saying various syllables all in one word thing so I will use queer for a lot of stuff because for me it kind of covers most of the stuff that I would talk about. <laughs> anyway, this is a book that I've been working on for the past two years. I haven't really drawn in it that much lately. I've kind of fallen off the hump on that, but I hope during this month maybe I'll draw some more in here. Um, in the corners I usually write like different ships and stuff or different characters or different people to draw for the future so I don't forget to add them in here, but hey, if anybody's interested in doing this, go get yourself a cheapy sketchbook and draw in it. And I would also recommend it's a good place to also practice using different materials. This is my also experimental book where I do a lot more stuff. By the way, if you're curious why I am wearing a glove, I don't have a computer glove for drawing on tablets. I have a tablet computer where I can draw using the program Krita. That's what I use for all of my digital art because it's free <laughs> and it works pretty decently. But because I have a tablet computer, I don't like how my hand rubs up against it and I like being able to use the, my fingertips for everything else. So I got some dollar store gloves, gloves from the dollar section in Target uh, a couple of years ago, and I'm living my young punk dream of being Frank Iero. <laughs> Alright, let's get started. Alright, so first off, because this is what led me to decide that this sketchbook is going to be the way it is, I drew Ruby and Sapphire, and this is my favorite thing probably in here. It actually, no, second favorite. Uh, the next one is my favorite drawing, but uh, this is done with hip squeak, pip squeak markers and I believe a sharpie pen, so you can totally do like awesome art using just basic materials. Pip squeak markers are basically just Crayola markers. I like pip squeaks because they're tiny uh, and you can get a huge pack of them for about 10 bucks and I used to carry them around <laughs> at in college, but uh, now I don't. A friend of mine actually was the one who turned me to them. Uh, shout out to Catelyn. <laughs> anyway, all right. Here's two of my D&D characters from long ago. This is Felton and Anatari. Uh, they end up being a parents, quote unquote, to one of my later D&D characters because I just, I have backstories for all my characters because why not? <laughs> Alright. But uh, Felton, I played them the most. They're a bard, they're a halfling, they're a classic bard. Uh, they'd sing My Chemical Romance songs 
when I could think of something. I'm not good at that, but I'm working on it because I play a lot of bards. <laughs> and Anatari just became a character I wanted to have as their partner. I really like this drawing because it was just done in pencil and I love how the shading turned out. And looking back on it, this is honestly one of the best drawings that I have have of like as a female character because like I don't know, Anatari just looks really really cute in this. Uh, Bubbleine had to show up eventually because that's kind of my go-to ship sometimes. I draw them every year for Inktober and I really also like to write words and stuff in the sketchbook if I can find like a good quote that for me represents the relationship and I really love the we'll build our own forever and never dance alone. <laughs> that was off key. That's fine. But I really love this ship and I love this drawing. I redid it in watercolor and I have it as a print. I've sold a couple of them. That one's probably my most popular. I, depending on if people are interested, I will probably get a couple more. I use cat print as my printing service. So uh, at the end of the video, I will talk about some stuff because game on uh, got canceled, but we're still doing an online exhibit hall. So if anybody wants prints from me, there's an opportunity. <laughs> Uh, Ochako and Sue. I watch My Hero Academia. I watched. I've only finished about most of season two, so please don't spoil anything. I got through the majority of the first exam, I think. Not the exam, but the hero thing. Anyway, I just, I saw a couple of things and people post about this. I'm not super fond of a certain popular ship in the show. Uh, not the one that has discount Zuko, but the other one with Sparky Sparky Boom Man. <laughs> Let me just rename all of my Hero Academia characters as Avatar characters. <laughs> it's fine. I'm kidding. Uh, but you know, it's fine. I'm not going to talk about ships because I know that's a touchy subject for a lot of people. And I do actually want to talk about ships at some point because the fandom stuff, uh, I've been part of fandoms and I've seen the worst of fandoms, so that's not related to these two. These two I just think are really cute and I think they have at least a good friendship and it's possible they could end up, I don't know, it's a cute ship. I like the colors green and purple green and purple, green and pink going together because it always makes me think of watermelons and I don't know, watermelons and like cute lesbian couples are just really cute to me because it just makes me think of summer happiness. I don't even like watermelons though, it's fine. This one's actually one of my favorites too. I Okay, I say like that for all these, but uh, Cecilos is probably my biggest OTP just because they're canon and they're married and they're happy and they're living together. I haven't listened to the latest two episodes, but I mean, like, I'm doing that na 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 thing and uh, this one was drawn with metallic color pencils from Crayola. And it's not very easy to tell that they're colored, they're, they're the metallic ones, but they are. Because I had gotten this pack and then a neon colors pack the day of because I got like a coupon or something. And also I just thought that it was time for us to make a life together and I'm pretty sure that's from Condos. I can remember very specific quotes from like the first 40 or so episodes of Welcome to Night Vale because those are when I was like super hyper focused on it. I'm also a little bit of a fan of Overwatch. I haven't kept up with it and I'm mostly fond more of the PvE stuff because I get too competitive and I become someone that I don't want to play with. I hate. <laughs> I'm not a good person to play video games with sometimes <laughs> unless it's something that's co-op so that's why I don't play a lot of Overwatch anymore. But I really like the headcanon that Mercy is trans. Uh, it's something I've been attached to since pretty early on, along with Genji. Uh, this was my own headcanon, but him being gender fluid, or them being gender fluid. Um, this has a story behind it. I drew this for an Inktober about two years ago, and actually it is two years exactly because- or not exactly, but it's not this previous Inktober, it was the, pre the Inktober before that. I drew this for Inktober. I knew that when I drew it, it would be pretty popular because I think this was also the time that they released a Zombie McCree skin. And I mean, um, this version of Hanzo has always been really popular, the Oni Hanzo. Hello, cat. <laughs> and I'm a huge fan of Delta Saur, so like that's another, it's a whole other thing, but like it different, that's a different, yes? 
I'm recording, buddy. <laughs> Total other thing. Anyway, I posted this on to Instagram. I posted this on to Tumblr. This, uh, I had drawn Bubbly in like maybe two nights before. And it was like the most recent canonical drawing of them together and them happy and all that jazz. Sorry for the chords, but <laughs> this got like about a hundred notes or something like that. This got a ridiculous number of likes and a ridiculous number of reblogs versus my Bubbleine one, which is a canon ship. I tagged it as Bubbleine. I, I did admittedly tag this as my console because I knew that it would get more visibility if I did that, but it was frustrating that year to have something that's canon get ignored while things that are just fan stuff, which I could go on about how this is actually a pretty interesting relationship, but I'm not gonna. But this got ridiculously popular when it comes to my stuff at the time. Gah. Anyway. Um, some poil. I mean, I basically just need to draw all of Steven Universe characters in the sketchbook. I just want to spread them out so it's not just Steven Universe, Steven Universe, Steven Universe all at once. I tried to spread things out so it's not all the same all at once. Serena's canonically by. And I think that's really important, so she goes into the sketchbook. Also, I had canon her being a little chubbier because I think that's just cute and she's a- she's kind of a kid who eats like jelly donuts and is kind of lazy in a sense and I know that some people can do that but I always just really like the idea of her being a little chubbier because it's just cute and it's possible to do it, you should do it. Just- just consider. Adventure Time again, because Adventure Time's a really fun style for me, and also I really like Susan and Frida, and this whole, like those five episodes, I think it was Islands, were really good. 100% would recommend if you haven't watched all of Adventure Time, this is a really good part. <laughs> and uh, also, freaking Frida is voiced by Jessica Nicole, who is the voice of Dana, Cardinal, uh, the former mayor of Night Vale. Spoilers. <laughs> But yeah, I really like this episode and I think like their relationship is really cute and really sweet and um, possibly pretty good. And I just realized that her leg should not be like that, it should be right around here. Me looking at stuff later on and realizing that stuff isn't right. It's okay. That's what going back and looking at your art is for. From Danny, uh, I really like the headcanon that Danny is trans. It's probably my main thing. When it comes to like representation in Danny Phantom, there's a lot of stuff that hints at it, and there's a lot of stuff that could that makes a lot of sense. Whether or not people agree with it, I don't really care. I just really like this headcanon, and I think it works really well with the series, and it doesn't affect the show. This was another Inktober thing. I left my sketchbook at work by accident, so I had to draw it in the sketchbook. Either way, Kara is canonically referred to as Kara and Frisk. They're referred to with they them pronouns. We don't know exactly what their gender is. I don't really have a specific headcanon for what they identify as, but I also really like the idea of Kara not necessarily being evil. They were just awakened to a place where they were being controlled by someone who was very evil and hurt all of their friends and family. So they react in a way to make sure that they can't hurt- you can't hurt your friends and family again. Here's a fast. They are the kid of Felton and Anatari. <laughs> and because of how I describe them, they're kind of a group of people kind of assume that they were like five, but really they're not. They're they're like 20s or something. I think they aged up to 30 because of uh, in-game things. But I, yeah, this is pretty much the only finalized version. They got killed pretty soon after this. Drew this really recently. I was listening to the song for 30 minutes straight by accident because I found an hour long thing and I was just drawing and I wasn't paying attention, but Bob is one of my favorite villagers. I didn't realize it re until recently, like looking up uh, what kind of furniture he has. He was one of my OG 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 characters uh, from my first Animal Crossing game because he has the kitty kitty furniture set and that was the one that I always go for for in any Animal Crossing game and I wasn't thinking of who was the one that had it but it was Bob specifically so yeah I had Bob in like my original game and I feel like he's just like, he's a good cat let's go guy I like to dance I like to move I guess I'll shake I guess I'll groove 
if you've seen any of my D if you watched my D&D character drawing, this is actually the the same character except in their underground <laughs> design. Uh, this is Ku. I Ku Laibo. Uh, they're one of my favorites. I adore them. Ku is a great character. Uh, they're gender fluid, uh, but usually they just go by they them because I don't really have time during the beginning of the game to be like, oh, they're wearing pink today. Oh, they're because my whole idea was they have this one little strand in their hair that they would prestigitate. Uh, to be a certain color for the day, or minor illusion, I don't know, whichever one. But I base their design a lot on Furiosa and Danger Days, if it's not obvious by the tattoo. <laughs> I don't know, I just- this is probably one of my favorites, although their foot is too small. <laughs> I also like the idea of them wearing freaking cowboy boots. Reed and Lala! You guys have not met these two, but there are some of my OCs. The, the, I mentioned them in my Homestuck video, but I don't know, people don't really watch things, I guess. I, I know that I just put things on the background for sound, so hello if you're just listening to the sound of this. <laughs> but this is Reed and Lala. Uh, I should draw them sooner than later because I have like a lot of stuff to say about them. They're, they're some of my favorite OCs that I've got. I drew this in a dark classroom because uh, one of my coworkers had me watch the kids for a few minutes and uh, she had like crayons and a Crayola black marker, so I drew Garnet <laughs> in the dark. Naps to Blook! I know that they are canon- they are referred to he him in the books, but when I drew this, we all kind of just agreed that Naps to Blook uh, is non-binary, because I think there was never really a time where in the game they were referred to as he him, they were referred to as they them, so yeah. Last one is a self-portrait that I drew kind of like about last year. Uh, I don't mention it too much because I don't feel like I it's as important, um, but I do identify as androgen and Demi. Uh, I know that <laughs> Demi is kind of a quote-unquote controversial. Everything's controversial in the LGBTQIA plus community. Love it. It's great. Anyway. And androgen, I don't really mind what kind of pronouns you use when you refer to me. They, them, she, her, he, him. Just don't use it. And we Gucci. Just not fond of it. I, uh, it's, I've got weird vibes about it. <laughs> I keep on saying that, but it, whatever. Anyway, that is all of these. And, uh, hopefully you enjoy this. <sighs> I didn't hit record and I had the best take. God. Anyway, hi, editing chotch. Uh, I've recorded this several times and I keep on becoming more and more frustrated with my own self of being unable to keep things short. So I'm going to post a full video on what's happening with Game On Expo, but short story, convention was cancelled so I'll be selling stuff online. Link to that will be down below in the Fanguru, but if you don't know what you're interested in, I'm going to have a full video on this because I realize I can't keep things short. So. With that, <laughs> I'm gonna just say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, stay safe out there, and look out for each other. Bye. Hey, so I forgot to mention this, but the speed paint that's at the end of this is Peridot because she is canonically Arrow Ace and there's not a lot of Arrow Ace representation in media, at least not, not a lot that I see. There's a lot of headcanons, but not a lot of confirmation. So it's nice to have that kind of representation in media. Okay, hope you enjoy.